Right now, Earth is losing a bit more oxygen than it makes every day. It's not a dramatic Hollywood disaster, but a slow leak. You won't feel it tomorrow or next week, but the arrow is pointing down. So what happens as the air just keeps getting thinner? By 2078, oxygen has dipped from 20.9% to 19.8%. A simple jog feels like climbing a mountain. Some high-altitude airports have to close. Doctors start diagnosing urban altitude sickness in city dwellers. To cope, our bodies adapt, producing more red blood cells, much like people living at high altitudes today. By 2023, we're at 17.5% oxygen. Public parks now feature oxygen booths. High-rise apartments come with O2 spigots. The real crisis is food. Crop yields plummet and prices skyrocket. Society splits into inners living in oxygen-rich domes and outers who brave the thin air. Then, gene editing clinics begin offering enhanced hemoglobin as a permanent solution. A thousand years in, oxygen is under 12%. The world becomes a network of sealed dome cities connected by airlocks. Walking outside without a mask is impossible. Farms are now underground, growing engineered food. Genetically edited humans with larger hearts and barrel chests are the new normal. Now oxygen is at a fatal 5%. Even genetically enhanced humans can't survive it. Civilization is confined to giant arcologies that generate their own air by splitting water. Outside, the world belongs to insects. Then a supervolcano erupts, blotting out the sun. The electrolysis plants fail, and one by one the domes go dark. While that timeline is a hypothetical drama, the tiny, real-world dip in oxygen is legitimate. Measurements, including those from the Mauna Loa Observatory, confirm it. Burning fossil fuels consumes oxygen, pulling O2 levels down while pushing CO2 up. Luckily, we have centuries, not seconds. But the downward trend has begun. Humans can survive a slow oxygen drain, but only if we don't wait until our lungs are begging for mercy.